Today we'll be making a CAD change to an Orphan Finite Element Mesh. An Orphan Finite Element Mesh is one that has no geometry associated with it. So here we'll import that Orphan Finite Element model. You can see there's no geometry associated with it, just nodes and elements. And then we'll bring in the CAD change. Here we have a CAD model that we'd like to bring in. And we'll lay that on top of our finite element model. So you can see out at the end there's some changes. We'll begin by going into the idealized part where we'll split off the changed part of the geometry above the hole that we want to remove. Then we'll go back to the FEM where we can remove the geometry from the FEM. And here I'll hold down the shift key to deselect. And now we're left with just our CAD change. Now we'll delete the elements around the hole that is being moved. And we want to make sure that we don't go above the CAD geometry, but we also want to make sure that we don't go too low to miss elements that are completely around the hole. So we can see we're low enough there with the CAD geometry, and here we can see we're high enough with removing the hole. So that all looks good. Let's go ahead and delete those elements. And now we can create some geometry from that jagged border where we cut the model. And we'll use face from mesh to do that. Here I'll go ahead and box select to make sure I get all the faces, but we've got too many. And to remove them, I'll hold down the shift key while using feature angle element faces in the smart selector. And that will reduce the number of picks I need in order to get exactly the element faces that I want. Now another thing that we want to do to reduce the number of picks later when we stitch is to make a large element face feature angle and element edge feature angle. This will join a number of the element edges together so that when we go to pick them, when we go to stitch, it will reduce the number of picks that we need to make. So here we've created a new body from mesh 5. Here we can hide our tet mesh so we can see that and you'll also see that it's created some shell elements on those element faces. And that's going to be important to get a congruent mesh after we stitch. We'll go ahead and hide it for now though and we'll open up one of the faces of our CAD change geometry. That will make it easier for us to be able to stitch. Now to stitch, we're going to start with edge to face and we need to make sure that that method is manual. If it's automatic, we're not going to get a congruent mesh across that boundary. So here you can see since we opened up those tolerances when we created the face for mesh that we only had four edges that we needed to pick. Then we'll go ahead and select the faces that we want to stitch it into and we can see we've got a stitch that goes all the way around the perimeter. And here I've turned on my polygon edge display so we can see stitched and free edges in cyan and magenta. So here let's clean up the model. We'll delete those faces now that we've stitched. And in order to get a watertight solid we need to stitch one more time edge to edge and this can be automatic. And now that we have that watertight solid, we can tet mesh. And I'm going to put this tet mesh into the existing collector from our finite element mesh that we imported earlier. So now that we've created our tet mesh, we don't need that shell mesh anymore. I'll go ahead and delete that. And you can see we've got a congruent mesh going across that border, and we can do a test solve to ensure everything looks good.
So there are some tips for using Face from Mesh to incorporate a CAD change into an Orphan Finite Element model.